Hi, I'm Lou from Dividend Dog. Thank you for joining us here today. So here at this channel, we look at uh, stocks with an emphasis on dividends paying stocks. So if that's your kind of thing, please like and consider subscribing to the channel. So today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at a company, McCormick and Company. Uh, it's a global giant in the spices and seasoning uh, business. Uh, they've got well-known brands, uh, obviously McCormick itself, uh, but also brands like Frank's Red Hot, uh, Laurie's, uh, French's Mustard, uh, Old Bay, Cattleman's Barbecue Sauce, uh, Stubbs Barbecue Sauce, uh, Zatarain's, uh, Cholula Hot Sauce, uh, and a lot more. Uh, a lot of the, basically the majority uh, is of their business is consumer, uh, but also they have what they call um, flavor solutions. Uh, those are flavors and custom condiments for businesses, industry. Uh, so they supply other, other food companies with different flavors and condiments. So that's the other second segments of their business. Um, let's go over a little bit of the history of McCormick. Uh, so it started out as like a cellar operation. They talk about a cellar and basement operation where there was a man back in 1889. It was started by it's uh, Willoughby M. McCormick, him and three workers. Uh, they were selling flavors and extracts going door to door. Um, 1921, it's also scaled up pretty good. They bought this new headquarters building. It's this great big building in Baltimore. Uh, 1947, they acquired Schilling of San Francisco. Uh, that's the largest spice business west of the Mississippi. So that made McCormick into a big industry leader in the space. Uh, the year 2003, they acquired Zatarain's. And in 2017, they acquired uh, Reckitt Benkiser's food division. That's what brought on the French's mustard and the Frank's red hot business. Uh, 2020, they acquired Cholula hot sauce. And in 2020, they also acquired Fona. Fona, I think I'm saying that right, Fona. Uh, so they've grown by acquisition and obviously uh, they've one quite large. Uh, let's look at the financials of this here. Uh, and note, there's two classes of stock. Uh, there's, there's the voting stock, which trades as MKC.V. Uh, so that does trade, but that's much more, uh, much less liquid than the more commonly traded uh, non-voting. The non-voting shares trade as MKC symbol. And it's, it's worth noting out of the approximately 268 million shares, uh, over 250 million shares are non-voting MKC shares. So that's what we're primarily talking about here, the MKC shares. The 2022 year uh, was weaker uh, than in the past. Uh, we won't know the exact number for its fourth quarter, it's expected to be released on uh, Thursday, January 26th, 2023. Uh, but we can use Value Lines earnings per share estimate uh, for the year uh, of $2.70. That's why that's all in italics and bold. Um, from reading uh, many sources, it seems like uh, the lower earnings are primarily due to higher commodity costs and also higher fuel costs. Um, otherwise, over the years, the earnings have been very stable and consistently growing. Uh, it's worth mentioning a major thing here is that McCormick has a truly uh, outstanding dividend record. Um, the dividend has been raised every year for 36 years in a row. Uh, so they are a dividend champion uh, those are companies that grow their dividends every year for at least 25 years or more. Uh, and they're also on the list of dividends aristocrats. Uh, 
they're part of the S&P 500 index. Um, the S&P 500 that haven't just pays, paid, but they've raised their dividends for a minimum of 25 straight years. Uh, this list has them raising their, their dividend for 36 years as well. Uh, so they are both, um, you know, dividend champion and dividend aristocrat. Amazing achievements. Uh, as far as the ratings, the ratings uh, value line uh, assigns them a financial strength of A+. Uh, Morningstar gives it a wide moat with a stable trends, uh, but a fair value of only $62 per share. Uh, S&P, as far as the rating agencies, S&P on 9-12-22, they affirmed their triple B credit rating. That was on the long-term foreign currency rating. Uh, the outlook, though, was changed to negative. Uh, Moody's gives it a rating of BAA2 for the senior unsecured debt. That was in an article mentioned uh, January 28th of 2022. Uh, so the bottom line is that the company does have an investment grade uh, credit rating uh, let's look at the insider uh, activity and insider ownership. So first here, on as far as the insider trading, uh, when we look the last four years, we see a few sales. Uh, almost all of the trading those options being exercised and sold. Uh, when we look at the ownership, um, you can see that the director and offices, uh, at first, the it looks like they own a lot of stock, but that's not really true. Uh, we can see the number in italics are shares uh, pursuant to options that could be exercised in the future to acquire the shares. So out of the director and officers as a group, uh, the 3.2 million shares that they quote unquote own, uh, over 2.2 million uh, potential shares could be acquired uh, by options investing. Uh, so still, as a group, they own about 1 million uh, common shares, which is a lot, but it's not nearly as much as it first appears to be. Uh, I think the bigger story here is that they list only one quote-unquote principal stockholder. And it's interesting that uh, that is the McCormick 401k retirement plan which owns over 2.7 million shares. So that's over 15% of the stock. So the employees have a strong vested interest in the company's future here. So we'll look at some of the, some of the pros here for this company. Um, I think the biggest thing is what we already touched on is just their strong dividend record here. You know, it's both a dividend champion, it's also a dividend aristocrat. So we have to look at this out of the thousands and thousands of shares of companies that are, that are on the markets uh, that you can invest in. Uh, when we look at this, there's only uh, 139 that are dividend champions, and there's only 65 that are dividend aristocrats. Um, I think that just illustrates just how rare and outstanding an achievement this is. And there's also no signs that the company is gonna uh, stop this trends anytime soon. They seem very committed to their dividends and raising their dividends, which is good for our shareholders. Um, I've, I'd say the other uh, pro about this here is I've read some analyst reports uh, questioning that you know as the economy gets tight, uh, consumers may start to start pinching pennies and they might trade down to cheaper products. Um, I, I, don't, I don't really see this though at, to any big extent. You know, its products are expensive. Uh, uh, seasonings tend to really just sort of make the dish for lack of a better term. Uh, I don't see chefs or home cooks wanting to mess up their recipe to, to save a few, uh, couple of dollars or a few pennies per serving. I just, I don't see that. Um, you know, likewise, in some of their other products, you know, they make a lot of barbecue sauce and 
you know, if you, if you have a favorite barbecue sauce, then um, I just can't fathom anyone switching that out to some inferior tasting uh, barbecue sauce. You know, I know this is kind of antidotal, but um, I think that's that's a pro that, you know, it's the stickiness of their relationship with the customers that like their products and they like the taste of it. Um, it's, this kind of leads us into, you know, the core business of seasoning and flavors. Um, I, I don't see this as a commodity business at all. I, I mean, there's a certain flavor profiles are number one. And uh, also I would say the, the brand's loyalty among consumers uh, is also there. I just think it would be very hard for a competitor to come in and really try to take away uh, a big share of their market share. I just don't quite see that happening anytime soon. So, I mean, I think those those are some really strong pros that this company has going for it. Uh, naturally, there are risks because there's always risk. Uh, I would say the first one is the commodity price inflation uh, is real and it's uh, hurting the company, uh, especially in the short term. It seems like everything is going up in price. Uh, so I think eventually though McCormick will be able to offset this with their own price hikes uh, sooner or later. Uh, they mention uh, the company mentioned some of their bigger uh, expenses of things like uh, dairy, pepper, uh, capsicum, which is red pepper and paprika. Uh, onion, uh, vanilla, garlic, salt, basically all the stuff that goes into seasonings in general. So there, there's, there's that whole commodity price pressure on those. Um, I would say the, the second risk is simply that McCormick and company, as a, as a company, the stock tends to trade at a relatively high price to earnings ratio. Um, at the current price of $77.44 um, versus the earnings per share estimate of $2.70 for 2022, uh, the PE then works out to about 28. Uh, that's, that's not cheap. Uh, so the danger is that if an investors as a whole decide that they uh, want to pay a lower multiple, than this, then this could send the, the stock price down in price. As I look over value line, at one point back in 2009, the average annual P.E. ratio for that year was only 13.7. Um, now, if I remember right, you know, that year, 2009, that was during a brutal housing market. There was a mortgage meltdown. Um, you know, so, you know, whether things get that bad again for the economy, uh, who knows? But uh, I think the biggest risk might be simply paying too much uh, to buy shares in this company. Um, another risk, uh, long-term debt is up from uh, growing by acquiring these other businesses uh, the last four or five years. You know, I, I see that... Um, if we go back to uh, when they bought the record Benkheiser business uh, back in 2017, uh, if we go back to 2016, their long-term debt was just over a billion dollars. And then after the deal in 2017, long-term debt then was $4.4 billion. Uh, now long-term debt is just under $4 billion, but total debt stands at $5.3 billion. So you know, if we look at five, six years ago, the debt then versus the debt now. Uh, so debt is up uh, due to these acquisitions. Uh, but, um, you know, it, it could end up just making the company stronger in the, in the coming years. So it might, it might pay off. Um, we'll have to see. But, you know, anytime you deal with more debt, it obviously makes things that much more riskier. So it's a risk. Uh, I would say another risk is the supply chain uh, getting screwed up. We, we hear about on the news all the time. It seems like they blame the supply chain for, for everything. Every company out there talks about supply chain issues. 
so you know they they were off buying all these these commodities from you know all these different countries um I'm, I'm not saying that they would have a problem but i guess it's always a risk that that could that could be an issue um there are two large uh customers of theirs that combined uh were 22 percent of their sales in 2021 um, two big customers. So it's not, you know, it's big, it's not crazy big, but I guess there's always a risk when, you know, you have a concentration of customers. So I would just say that, I, you know, in the bottom line is I really like this company. Uh, it's, it's a company that operates in a, a little niche here in the food industry, but it's a profitable niche. Um, I've owned shares for many, many years on this company. Um, my cost basis is only $2.80 per share, uh, although I don't own that many shares in it. Uh, would I buy more? Um, you can see over the past year, the price has come down of the stock, but it hasn't like totally crashed either. Uh, just look over the past five years. Uh, we look over five years, it's still still up pretty impressively. So while I would like to add more shares of this, this excellent company, um, I see, uh, you know, I, I might wait and see if, what the market gives me as far as an opportunity to do so uh, at even a lower price, because it could go down, it could go up. So, I mean, you don't know, but um, I'm gonna hold on to the shares I have and I guess kind of wait and see what happens here. If the, if the stock continues to go down, I may add to it. Um, but, uh, oh, and this is not financial advice. Uh, just to be clear, this is just my honest opinion. Uh, but that is the truth of, uh, of McCormick and Company. So by all means, leave your comments, thoughts, opinions. Tell me what you think about this. Uh, thank you for watching. And if you enjoy these videos, please like and consider subscribing. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.